Yeah. So what I'm going to do is do a follow up to um, these videos that I made uh, concerning the reparations, the African American versus the Aboriginal and people's continued reaction to them. I think it's kind of funny how people, if they're not used to certain information, they just keep repeating the lie that has been told to them. Even when you prove to them that it was a lie. As you heard with those two guys in the video, uh, you ask them certain questions, they can't answer. Instead, they start yelling, screaming, talking over you, the usual uh, Negro tactics. So they can't prove their case. They couldn't prove their case. So they just resorted to screaming and yelling and over talking you. But at the same time, they're still asserting their claim, even though it has been disproven and they couldn't prove it. So, as I always say, when you fail to prove your case, but you stick to the same old case, that means you have an agenda. It's just like um, people who, uh, sorry about that, to write something. It's just like people who um, block you on YouTube. When you prove them wrong or you talk about something else, they block you. That means they have an agenda. There's no getting around it. Uh, we can make all the excuses that we want, but that's the case. And uh, <clears throat> another thing I've noticed as it relates to this topic. When I really started thinking, because I started watching a uh, video by the Irritated Genie last night. The latest one he put out, uh, I forgot the title of it, but it was concerning what he wants for Africa. He wants to divide the U.S. into Africa and triple the black or African population throughout the world. See, uh, these are lofty goals, lofty views that you do after you've conquered something. These are not things that you do when you can't even conquer a block in the U.S. You, I mean, I think that's the problem with, with a lot of black people, man. We, we become distracted and we start talking about things that are baseless. And again, this brings me to what I'm trying to get at, which is what I noticed with the irritated genie. Like I said, I like the guy, regardless of what, what other situations might uh, come out of him. But I, I noticed that when you deal with people like the Irritated Genie, Sarah Sutton said, no, I'm not taking a shot at him. Young Pharaoh, Tariq Nasheed, who plays all sides of the fence, by the way. Sadnetta House of Consciousness, that Jamaican Garfield, and he's listening. You know I'm talking about you. Dr. Henry Clark, Dr. Ben, and other black organizations and other black groups, so to speak, or individuals. As I was listening to the Irritated Genie, and he kept saying, you have to be African, or we don't want you. You have to have an African-oriented state of mind. Seti does that too. Of course, he's from that same camp. Young Pharaoh, you know, obviously that's not what he's about, so you don't really hear that from him. But with a lot of these other guys, it's either two uh, ways of thinking. It's Caribbean or it's African. Have you noticed that these people who come to the United States, they keep pressuring black Americans into talking about Africa or the Caribbean? But they don't talk about us. When they talk about domestic U.S. policy, they talk about it as it relates to Africa and the Caribbean. Caribbean people 
they talk about us as they try to attach themselves to us. And then they always bring it back to the Caribbean. For instance, Garfield of the so-called Dagger Squad. Uh, I had a talk with this guy. Private talk on the phone. And uh, again, my man has lied to me. So this is why I, I analyze people. I analyze the facts and then I call them out. You know, we had a clip, what I thought was a clear understanding that black Americans are not Jamaicans. And even if black slaves from Africa got dropped off in Jamaica, of all islands, uh, <laughs> and then transported to the U.S., that wouldn't make us Jamaican because Jamaica and a Jamaican culture did not exist at that time. And that's just like holding over car cargo with their same culture retained and moving them on, if that happened. So again, for this man to continue to assert that black Americans are Jamaican or we have a Caribbean connection, is bullshit. And my man is full of shit for saying that. And I'm tired of it. And you gotta ask yourself the question, why do they keep saying it? Because they're trying to usurp us, that's why. That's why I keep telling you and I don't really like telling people what to do. I just like presenting the evidence and then you make up your own mind. But in this case, we must separate from these people. And you notice when we talk about separation or just staying away from them, they become very angry. They say we're all the same people, even though we don't look alike. They say we're all African. That's another thing with this pro-African stuff. They keep trying to demand that you are African. And demand that you recognize being an African. Now, what if you don't want to do these things? Why, why do you have to? That's the question. And the answer is, it's a big distraction. Because they're keeping you away from black America's unique topics. Instead, what you're doing is you're spending your time, you're spending your money worrying about Africa, the politics of African nations, and the Caribbean. Those are not our lands. They're not our people. They're not our culture. We don't have to worry about these people. But these people come over here, and I, I, again, not so much the Africans, because the Africans have more or less made up their mind. They're not dealing with us at all, in general. But it's the Caribbean. They are the ones who need this link because it helps them to come up and maneuver themselves in this country. See, to us, they say they're African, they're black, we're all one. But I've seen it with my own eyes, heard it with my own ears. When they are in front of white people and it's advantageous to them to not be black, then they make sure they either turn on an accent or remind somebody white, I'm Jamaican. Uh, I'm uh, from Barbados. Anything to make sure that somebody else knows, hey, I'm not like them. Why do they do this? Because they know the problems that we face are unique to this country. And it's not all black people who are facing these issues. It's black America. But they have to attach themselves to us in order to maneuver themselves in this country. Which, hate to say, but that, that, that's a good tactic. But at the same time, it's to our disadvantage. Because we become uh, intertwined in their politics. To the point that we start forgetting about our power, politics. Like my oldest sister. She dealt with nothing but Jamaican men. To this day, I still don't know why. But after a while, she changed. How did she change? She started using uh, spices, curry, and all this other stuff that Jamaicans use in their uh, recipes. And she started incorporating that stuff into her cooking. And now she acts like she's a Jamaican. She, and she listens to Jamaican music. I'm like, this is not the sister I grew up with. She was listening to black soul music and rap music. Now, 
she's listening to <laughs> some Jamaican music. I'm like, oh, boy. It, you know, and this is an example of how people usurp. This is an example of how a woman, what you notice is mostly the women because they love the Jamaican men for some reason. Seems the darker and the uglier, not that dark and ugly go together, but the darker and the uglier, the better. Even though she had some Jamaican guys that had, you know, I guess they had a little bit of Indian activity into them. She never liked any light-skinned guys, though. I never saw her with one of those. But, again, what that meant is that now she's no longer worrying about black America. And me and her, we never really discussed politics and social issues like that because we had a volatile relationship. You know, you, she's one of those people where you say the wrong thing, then they go crazy. But, um, <laughs> so, you know, I kind of stay away from real world uh, issues when dealing with her. But from the few that we even try to discuss, she loves whoever pays and she's not really concerned with black American issues. I would be correct to call her an Uncle Tom, but she's an Uncle Tom in a way that, that that's not necessarily anti-black Uncle Tom, but she's an Uncle Tom when she doesn't like black Americans herself. <laughs> Instead, you know, she likes the, the white man who pays her. Even though, well, I'm not going to tell business, but she likes the white man who paid her, and um, she likes Jamaicans. I don't think that's cool. You got to love your own people. And what people like me, what we're trying to do is we're trying to get people on the good foot, so to speak. You know, we're trying to let people know. We're trying to educate people. So this is why I don't mind Yvette Carnell and Tariq Nasheed. Going along with this particular uh, talking point. Because this is something that needs to be spread out. Black people need to be aware of these things. But they're both hypocrites. Uh, for instance, the latest Yvette Cardell show. There was a guy who called up. When she was talking about the, the Castro lady. The politician. Uh, he started saying she might be a Sephardic Jew. And she's like, oh, I ain't got time for that. <laughs> she's like I gotta let you go on that one see I notice when people start bringing up the Jew stuff and people start panicking that's a clear sign of who's backing them so <laughs> they don't even want to touch on it they don't want to make a mistake and say the wrong thing and you notice Tariq Nasheed does the same thing they panic when it's Jew time so these guys like I said they're always talking about African and Caribbean politics and there are some people, when you talk about black American politics, uh, like a black economy, some people will bring up and say, oh, well, somebody, an African guy just bought this business. Uh, a Jamaican guy owns that business. And they act like we're supposed to get excited. They're not doing anything for us. That's for them. You know, even on this Yvette Carnell show, they kept talking about how immigrants, which is something I talked about, how immigrants are coming here and they're taking jobs. But see, I, I don't like to concentrate on the so-called Latinos. I like to remind you that the African and the Caribbeans are in that competition as well. And the white man is giving these people jobs while assing us all out. So you better keep uh, be aware of that. So they kept talking about that kind of uh, thing. And um, again, it's all of the immigrants who are doing this. It, for instance, uh, they say if, you know, one of the ways that they keep trying to X people out of uh, jobs, black people in particular, is they require you to speak Spanish. Now, you technically, that shouldn't be a job requirement, but that's how they get slick to discriminate, legal discrimination. Because right there, they're saying, okay, even if others can speak Spanish, I'm really saying, okay, if you're and illegal. This job is for you. That's what they're saying. So, um, 
And they say other so-called Latinos, they only hire other Latinos, which is true. I see that in, in certain stores. What's the store out here? Key Foods. I didn't even know the name of the store for the longest time. But then I looked at the uh, receipt or something like that because I didn't even notice the store name, to be honest with you. But I would go there. I just looked at it as a Spanish-speaking store. I think I told you the story before. But all they hire are Spanish-speaking peoples. That's discrimination. It's funny, though, when it comes to black Americans and even whites. Not that I'm defending whites on this, but it's funny how they're forced to hire others. But when it comes to so-called Latinos, East Indians, and other so-called Arabs, they can just have no uh, uh, diversity at all in the workplace. They just hire their whole family, and that's it. I mean, that's crazy. And like I said, even East Indians, they will hire non-Asian blacks to work there at their places, but they will be Caribbean or they'll be African. And a lot of times if they hire Caribbean, African, and so-called Latino, they'll usually have the African doing the worst job, which is cleaning up. I've noticed that. So, again, Jamaicans. You got people like Sa Netta who keeps saying we got to support black businesses, but yet... Every time you see him buying something, who is he buying from? His Dominican brothers and sisters. Or he's buying from an African. He, he's handing them money. And you've seen it more than enough times to know that it's not a coincidence. You, he didn't just happen to go to these people. He's handing these people money. And if it's not them, it's, his, it's the other Caribbeans. And speaking of that, that's, that brings me to this point. People here get trained and brainwashed into supporting Jamaicans and other Caribbeans, but when these people have their businesses, are they hiring us? No, they're not. They're hiring their own people. So where is this black unity at? I'm not seeing it. So that's the thing. This is why I, I say what I say. I have to see the real world change. If I don't see the real world change, then I know these people are full of shit. And that's what we have to understand. Um, so they're not hiring black Americans. They're hiring their own people. I'm sure they hire Chinese Jamaicans and East Indian Jamaicans. But we're asked out. But then they call us to patronize them. And the U.S. They almost force us to. They keep beating us over the head. Support black businesses. But they don't define what a black business is. I'm defining what a black business is right now. That's black American business. That's not foreign blacks. That's not anybody else. And we better get our business together. Or these foreigners. With the assistance of the white man. They're going to just corner the market on any conceivable business at all. We're not even going to have an opportunity. Even to open up a chicken shack. I mean, it's just getting crazy. What's this Kennedy fried chicken? They say that the Afghans own that. I wouldn't even eat at a place like that. I just don't like the way the place looks. But apparently they're making enough money to, to make a lot of money out of it. But Negroes, there's some things black people must have no matter what. Fried chicken, blunt, uh, beer, uh, candy. And clothes. Those, and that includes uh, sneakers. Those are the things that black people seem to have to have. No matter what. They don't give a damn uh, what discrimination is out there. They're not unified. See, and, and part of our faulty de decision making is we become friends with Caribbeans. And the reason why I point them out more because it's pan-African concept. It's coming from them. They're the ones that have to keep enforcing it and keep putting it in our minds like a religion. When we reject it, they become more desperate. You hear me, Garfield? Yeah. You hear me, Sa Netter? You know, they become more desperate because they're like, uh-oh, we're losing them. So they keep on saying, okay, you're a coon. You're this, you're that if you don't accept this African shit. All I ask, prove the shit. Prove it. Then I'll accept it. Don't just get me to accept something that can't be proven. Doesn't make any sense. And this Garfield has some goddamn nerve. 
coming to this country. And I, I, I had the conversation with the guy. Uh, I told him, you got to stop talking about we when you talk about our history in this country as a black American. Because that's not you. That's us. It has nothing to do with you. You weren't even, you're not even from this country to begin with. Let alone if you were a Jamaican guy born in the country. I mean, come on. But he keeps on doing it. He did it today on uh, Side Netter. So it goes to show that this is a, an agenda, uh, a clear-cut plan, and that the man is some type of agent and a scam artist. I mean, there's no, there's no question about that because the man keeps repeating the process. When you keep repeating the process, that means you're up to something. So he just continues to say that of all countries on earth, for some odd reason... Black people in the United States come from Jamaica and, and into the southern U.S. Doesn't make sense at all. Because, number one, when the uh, U.S. got uh, started, the, the uh, United States, the British, they didn't even own Florida at the time. So... They couldn't put them through Florida and they wouldn't even bother going to the Caribbean because you had a whole bunch of different countries that could have been hostile. So they had to stick to the North, South and the Northeast. That's why Providence, Rhode Island was a big slave port. Duh, because it was a safer route and a more direct route. Why'd you go from Africa all the way to the Caribbean didn't go all the way up into uh, the, the Northeast U.S. Doesn't make any sense. But this jackass, that's what I'm calling you right now, Garfield, because I'm tired of this shit. You goddamn foreigners, man. I mean, you guys have to stop this. That's why I'm glad what I'm saying is catching on because black people need to wake up and know that we're being used, we're being manipulated. Uh... That's why you have to stay away. Once you find out somebody's Jamaican, you can usually tell by the features. Now, of course, there's some people who are going to be half and half because I do have nephews uh, whose fathers are Jamaican. And I noticed that they start taking on that culture. Even though they weren't raised Jamaican at all, they were raised with us. But, you know, it is what it is. So, because, they, like I said, I think I said this in a, another video too. He's recognizing that when you're a black person from a different heritage, you get treated in a different way. And Jamaicans, as much as they talk this pro-black shit, pan-African shit to us. When you go into all Jamaican setting and you're not Jamaican, see how they treat you. First, they're going to look at you like, well, I speak for myself since I'm a little light. I mean, there are some light Jamaicans. Look at Heavy D. Uh, Heavy D is lighter than me, by the way. Uh, or was. They'll look at you like, I don't know what kind of person this is. I don't know if they're one of our people or not. But once they hear you speaking and you're asking, okay, what's this? What's that? Then, you know, they look at you with the mean face. Like they want you to hurry up and get out. Either that. Or they're selling drugs behind the scenes or something. But, and you know they do that. And that's another thing I address with Garfield. They like to talk about the positives that they've done in this country. Off of our backs, by the way. But then when I talk about the crack cocaine. Then they get quiet. They don't want to address all that. Because... The stereotype is black Americans are the ones who spread the drugs within black uh, so-called communities. And they're the ones destroying everything. But when you do the facts, it's the Jamaicans. It's other Caribbeans. It's Dominicans. I mean, how many movies, thug movies, hood movies do you have to see? Uh... Some based on true stories where they say, hey, I had to go and get my Dominican connection. I had to get my Jamaican connection, belly, paid in full. Whatever other movies you can think of, the, the, the master intermediate, intermediate connection is always a Caribbean. Am I lying or am I telling the truth? 
You know I'm telling the truth. But to the Jamaicans, I'm going to be lying. So, and, and I know sometimes Jamaicans like to separate Dominicans and Puerto Ricans because they speak Spanish and because the white man does that. They're all Caribbeans, got the same Caribbean mentality. Now, this is not a hatred on Caribbeans. I know some are going to be like, I'll be damned. It sounds like it to me. But you never heard me say I hate them. That's what you never heard. I just said we need to stay away from them. Let them do their thing. So we can do our thing because they distract us and they kiss white people's ass and they snitch on us. I had this happen on a job many times. You know, they try to get close to you, befriend you, and then you see, you hear the talk, you see them kissing white people's ass only to snake the black Americans and then act like they're great. And then I say, these, these motherfuckers, man, this is how they do it. So, they talk that black unity to sedate your mind, to seduce you, to let you uh, put your guard down. Then they attack. That's why the best solution is to separate. Matter of fact, if you, they keep following us everywhere just like Latinos. But if you actually distance yourselves from them, don't hang out with them, only hang out with your own people, black Americans... I bet you you'll see a big change. Jamaicans will be forced to do something else. Now, when I say Jamaicans, that means other Caribbeans as well. They'll be forced to do something else. They, I mean, they largely stick to their own communities as it is. So they'll be forced to do it. You know? And um, that's something we need to practice. Once we practice that, you'll see how much crime that we don't do. And how much crime that the others do. Again, you see the Malcolm X, uh, West Indian Archie, and his criminal enterprise of Caribbeans. That wasn't us. That was them. Terrorizing our communities. And the white man doesn't give a damn. So, you know, what, what, is, what is it, Garfield? What, I mean, what, why, why are you doing this? Why do you keep continue to do it? And when I say Garfield, I'm talking to you specifically, but at the same time, I'm talking to your Caribbean people. You say you're half Jamaican, half Cuban. That covers a whole gambit of Caribbeans right there. So you need to leave us alone. You guys want to be African? Kick that shit to yourselves because you are African. We're not. There's evidence that you are African. In the history and in your faces. That's the thing. See, I don't, I don't just talk. When you look at the faces of Jamaicans, you can clearly see and immediately see the difference between them and us. You can see the resemblance. And in a lot of cases, the clone of a uh, Caribbean, Jamaican, and an African from these, these mysterious West Africa. I keep telling you, I've seen too many Dominicans who look exactly like Nigerian types. Exactly. But they speak Spanish. You start telling them that, they get offended. They don't want to hear that. That's why I keep saying, Garfield and you other Jamaicans, what you need to do, leave us alone and watch you go preach this word to these... Uh, uh, Cubans, Dominicans, Puerto Ricans. Those are the ones you need to preach that word to. Just like uh, all these Egyptian stuff, they need to go out there and preach that word. So, leave us alone. If you, if you, Why do you keep touching us? Why, do, why don't you touch your uh, Hispanic uh, uh, Caribbean people and try and uh, force them to become Africans? Do that. Don't come here with us. Like I said, if the U.S. weren't number one, you wouldn't even be bothered with us in the first place. But since it's number one, you want something in here. I suspect that you guys are working for the British. I'm, I know it may sound outlandish, but that's who controls Jamaica, the British. They're part of the Commonwealth. There's royal this and royal that in Jamaica today. Just like in Canada. You don't see any royal anything in the United States. The only thing you see here is royal crown soda and the Kansas City Royals. That's the only thing you see royal in this country. 
But in Jamaica, Canada, Royal, uh, what is it, Royal Canadian, whatever the hell it was, whole bunch of Royal this and Royal that. And I was watching some interview about some murder in Jamaica. One of the officers, the cops, he had some crown on his uh, uh, shirt to denote his rank. And he was a royal police. Come on. British are imperialists. The one thing they've mastered is knowing how to infiltrate countries, usurp, and take over. And if you don't believe that this is possible even with the United States, you got to understand there are two groups on both sides. The U.S. and the U.K. that control the damn economy. And those people are intertwined. You look at the entertainment biz in the U.K. and over here, run by the same people. With the same names. Just a different ac accent. That's it. Um, you look at this as well. You're seeing British this everywhere. Every time you turn on TV or a commercial. It's a British person. You think this is by coincidence? This is what we call usurping. And again. These Pan-Africanists. They're getting on my nerves. That's why I'm ready to debate whoever, whenever, however. And you saw me debating those two guys. And I think one of them, he was listening to the playback on this. So I'll tell it to you as well. I think his name was Africana. And that was the one with the actual African ancestor. Who should speak for himself and not for us. Because all of us are not like you. We don't have any direct African ancestor that we could trace. If. You were telling the truth. I'll take your word for it that you were telling the truth. But. You got defeated on all your points. But you still. Kept insisting that your story was true. That's not cool man. That's not cool. So again you guys have to be agents. Or either that or you're just too proud. To say okay. I got it wrong. Let me change my ways. A lot of people don't like to admit that. It's like when the Israelites are on the street and they preach the, the Bible verbatim. And the Christian says, oh man, it's not what I thought it said. But I'm still going along with what I thought anyways. You know, so that's what they do. And that's what these Pan-Africans do. And again, whether it's a master teacher if you notice, whether it's a James Smalls, uh, Dr. Ben, Clark, whoever you could think of, uh, Frances Cress Welsing, she's an exception to that rule. She didn't really go too, too far out in another land as much. Minoko Rashidi, he's always dealing externally of the United States. Every one of them. Like I said, they're always discussing Africa. They go back to Egypt, which, of course, they're, you know, trying to slip Freemasonry in there for you. Uh, but if they talk about some other kind of Africa, it's always talking about Africa. We, we did this. We did that. Uh, but that was so long ago. They never tell you what we should be doing or what we need to be doing right now. Well, I'm telling you. Right now, what we need to be doing and what we should be doing is we need to get rid of these Caribbeans. Don't get next to them at all. Don't worry about any sex from them. Don't worry about any drugs. I know if you're a drug addict, probably not going to be able to stay away, but <laughs> stay away. But no sex. The women, the black American women, you have to learn to contain yourselves. White women have sex with Jamaicans because Jamaicans have a lot of uh, mixed kids. Let them do it. Don't you do it. Because, again, we need a focus. This is our country, our nation, our land. But the white man hooks up foreigners, and we kind of assist them, too. Because every time something goes down, Negroes come to the rescue of so-called Latinos and so-called Caribbeans and so-called Africans. But you never hear these Negroes, the high, uh, higher end ones and the lower end ones. You never hear them discuss Japanese, East Indians, 
Pakistanis or any of the so-called minorities, immigrants, who are in the upper middle class, the high class ranks, because they're all set. That's why. Latino and Caribbeans, they're foreigners, they're competitors. We don't have to give them a boost. Every community you see, Mexicans have been moved in by the white man. You don't move people in without setting up a means for survival. Of course, they get a lot of things. They get welfare. They get WIC. That's also taken from you as well. Uh, they get Section 8. That's being taken from you as well. And you notice how conservatives on their conservative radio programs, when they talk about what they want to call handouts, they're always associated with blacks. See, that's another distraction. They're associated with blacks, but they never want to pin it on the illegals getting these so-called handouts and the hookup to get here in the first place. But they don't want to do that because then they have to explain, well, if these people are illegal, then how are they legally getting these handouts? They don't want to explain all of that because then you know, okay, well, the politicians are obviously on the take and they're breaking the law. That's what sanctuary cities are. Politicians breaking the law. Bottom line, no such thing as a sanctuary city. It's politicians breaking the law. If they weren't all on board, even Donald Trump, he just talks tough, but he's not doing a damn thing. Because they already brought him in here for the purpose of slave labor. He's rich. You take any one of his properties that he actually owns, and I can guarantee you he has a whole crew of uh, Mexican laborers. I can guarantee you that. So, again, these are competitors. We need to leave them alone and work with ourselves. Once we work with ourselves, we can get that black Wall Street back. You know what I mean? Jamaicans weren't involved in that. But I wouldn't be surprised if some uh, jive Jamaican uh, comes up and says, Oh yeah, Jamaicans, we started uh, Black Wall Street. We taught the black Americans how to do it. When, when doubt they start talking that shit, they're already trying to say we're the or they're the origins of us. <laughs> I mean, there's nothing Jamaican about us. Uh, anything Jamaican is a 20th century uh, adaptation, which is by force. The music. I always ask myself, like in the 90s, um, how did the Jamaican dance hall and reggae music, how did they selectively choose a guy and say, okay, we're going to play this on the radio station? But I know this is never anybody else from the Caribbean or I don't know what kind of music they make, Calypso or any other kind of foreigner, but it's always the Jamaican. Maybe they worked at these stations or something, or maybe somebody's helping them to merge with us. But the bottom line is, for those of us who are black Americans, and we heard this Jamaican music, we know we don't know what the hell they're saying. What's that song, uh, Terra Fabulous? The action. Aja baja boo. Sweet. No go. See, that's how it sounds to me. I don't know what the hell the man's saying all these years. I still don't know what the hell the man's saying. So, that's how Jamaican music sounds to me. Uh, I still don't know how they can understand each other, but that's not our culture. That's not us. So, we have to concentrate on ourselves, and we have to dismiss coons, like Tariq Nashi playing both sides of the fence, other coons. Most of these people you see out here, they are working for their slave masters, but since they're getting well paid, I mean, you can't tell anybody anything when they're getting paid and when they're getting the assistance from the white man. I just watched the uh, Superfly Blu-ray. Just got that in my hands. Yeah, the picture quality is not as dramatic as the DVD, but it's still better to have than to, than to not have. Um, it's like what Eddie said, I don't care. The white man can use me as long as I make a piss pot full of money. That's the mentality of a lot of black people. As long as 
I'm being used and the white man is protecting me, then I'll do what he tells me to do. But see, that same guy, Eddie, if you notice, just like in Superfly, well, that's what I'm talking about. Superfly said, I want to go alone. I'm done. I want to uh, get rid of the chains. I don't want to be controlled by the white man. So he wanted to leave. Eddie said, now the white man is feeding me. So I got to stay. He couldn't envision doing his thing on his own. So that's what we're faced with. And that's how coons do what they do. Because they have the white man, they have white power backing them. And like I say, you want to know who a coon is, a coon agent? Ask him about the Jews. Yvette Carnell was asked about the Jews, and no, that wasn't me that called in. I think it started at around 1 hour and 24 minutes into the show. That wasn't me that called in. My man went into the Jew thing. She's immediately like, oh, no, I got to go. Tariq Nasheed, you asked him about the Jews. The Jews run the world? No. He, he plays stupid. Tommy Sotomayor asked him about the Jews and his hidden colors. And that's where that so-called beef got into play. So that's how I put people to the test. You know, you got to see what they're willing to talk about and what they're not willing to talk about. These people show their faces, I keep telling you. Faces get shown because people are still asking me, you need to show your face. I don't need to do anything. You don't need to worry about my face. The only time you'll be worried about my face is if you're a homosexual. That's it. <laughs> I mean, matter of fact, you know, it's funny. The two guys I was uh, having that uh, little discussion with, they asked me, one of them asked me, what do you look like? But they didn't show their face. I'm like, <laughs> now the guy, I guess the guy that had the face with the red, black, and green flag on it, that could have been his face. Still a little bit disguised, but I guess you can more or less make out what's going on there. But, um, you know, you, we got to stop worrying about people's faces because the people who have the face shown, those are the ones that need to influence the most because that's how they gain trust by showing their faces. <clears throat> and that's why they keep mentioning. I show my face. I put my life on the line while driving S-Class and living in a million dollar home. Uh, <laughs> they're putting their life on the line. Donate to me so we can help fight white supremacy. Even though I'm living in a million dollar home in a white neighborhood full of suspected white supremacists. And my wife is half white suspected white supremacists and her family are suspected white supremacists no I take that back since I married her this is Tariq Nashi talking I guess her family they're no longer suspected white supremacists they're off the hook now they're okay so I can't count them that's that's Tariq Nashi's thinking um, so you know this is what we have to understand man and you notice a lot of the people who are out there with their faces out there, they're not really ugly. Because that's another thing that they need to reel you in. You know, if you had a, a wild looking individual, <laughs> you know, it might be hard to reel people in. So this is what they do, man. And, and we have to, uh, you know, I don't even know how that gold fund me is. They keep saying verify this, verify that. I did. That last donation I got, they still weren't. I didn't get a confirmation that that was being sent. And then I went to check my thing. They say you're not accepting donations. I might have to set up a, uh, something else. Um, so, uh, you know, they're, they're very confusing, uh, GoFundMe. But, um, like I said, if I had the donations, I'd get the shit underway. That's the thing, man. People like Tariq Nasheed, they have the money. Or they talk about some bullshit Hidden Colors 5. I mean, come on. How many Hidden Colors do you need? You don't need any more. He needs to talk about his Hidden Colors. Maybe I might put that shit together myself. I'm not going to charge you a dime. <laughs> I'm 
I'm sure he'll try to flag it down. But, um, yeah, so, that's, this is what made me come up with this one today. Because I was watching the Irritated Genie. Then I was watching Garfield talk that same talk, line for line, verbatim, rehearsed lines about uh, black America's Jamaican origins. Just take out a map. Look at tiny Jamaica, then look at the size of the United States next to Jamaica. Case closed right there. <laughs> I mean, come on. Jamaicans go to their home master land of the United Kingdom and the United Kingdom's uh, subordinate country of Canada. Those, that's where they go to mainly, then they come here. See, when they come here, they're no longer under the auspices of the United Kingdom. But when they go to Canada, they are. That's why they keep going to Canada. They should go to Canada. You, if you ask me, Canada has a low population. They should keep on going there. But they come here for other reasons. And again, I challenge anyone. But I know nobody's going to debate me or challenge me. Because as you can see, that was an impromptu debate. Those guys were lightweight. I mean... Come on, man. They were dispatched in no time. Uh, that's why I said I'll take on anybody. I don't care who they are. I don't care who they think they are. In a debate, you can't debate with me and win. Because I, I keep telling you, man, I got one foot in the ghetto, one foot in the universities. I could take on anybody from either arena. Because I know how to handle ghetto individuals. Now, it were, I'm, I'm even more effective when it's one-on-one -on -one or two-on-one. -on -one, I'm telling you. But when more people start getting into the mix, start confusing my points I'm trying to make, that'll mess things up a little bit. That's the only weakness. But I still stick to the point, as you saw in these videos. So, once I catch you in one lie, like I always say, and I like to say this because... These are the facts, because I'm not lying what I, what I talk about. What I talk about is the truth. But when I catch you lying, I know I got you trapped and you can't escape. You can't escape. Because you either have to continue to lie, try to lie to cover up that uh, mistake or that lie I caught you in. Or you're going to have to say, you know what, you're right, you got me. And if I got you, I more or less win. So... As you heard in the video, those guys wanted some more. I don't know why they wanted more. Because they couldn't prove their case. You have to prove your case. But they failed to do that. But they still, a lot of black people, like they like to continue to lie. And like I said, when you lie about the same things that have been disproven, that means you have an agenda. And before I close this out, um... I forgot my man's name, man. But he's the one with the... Uh, my man comes with all the details about the Caribbeans. He said, I should check out the... In Search of Uhuru. Uh, uh, live stream, Googles. And uh, go back and forth. You know what? I, I'd like to. But, here's the thing. I was on a... I used another channel of mine <laughs> and I was talking about uh, some of the things they were talking about in the chat room. I, like a lot of other people, we got blocked with the quickness. As soon as we said something they didn't agree with or we said we're not from Africa, you're blocked. I'm like, see, here's, here's what it is in my mind. I guess maybe because I have a whole lot of patience. Uh... If you feel that something that you're saying is correct and right. You know, a lot of people, they come and they defend it with uh, vigor. They, they speak loudly. They speak as if what they're saying is the only way and the only answer. And you can't challenge it. You can't debate it because they'll break you down. See, that's fine to do. A lot of those guys, they're bullshitting you. When you actually challenge them 
on the facts, on the evidence, or on the lack of evidence, they get upset. Some people get upset in different ways. They call you a nigger. Or whatever name they can come up with to discourage you from challenging them any further. Then others will say, oh, we have a troll. You know how it is, just to get you out of here so they don't have to explain themselves. We have a troll. Or, uh, this person is lost. This person uh, is coming with foolishness. They're trying to derail us. They're agents. They're coons. <laughs> I mean, anything it takes except for challenging the information or answering specific questions because they don't have the answers. So it's better to scream and yell, call people trolls, call people coons, call people whatever you want to call them, but just make sure you don't answer the question. That's why people can't stand my interrogations. Because once I'm on the case with the interrogation, that's it for you. Now, if you really feel what you're saying is right and truthful, then all you have to do is tell the truth and get down with the program and debate with me. And I'm not like these other people. I'm not going to keep on making excuses and trying to lie just so that I appear correct. If you got me beat on a point, I'll concede that point. Now, if that point that you got me beat, beat on uh, destroys the whole puzzle I'm building, then you got me beat in total. But I don't argue about things that I don't know and that I can't prove. So that's why you, hear, you rarely hear me arguing about religion or the, what some people say, fake Jesus, uh, fake God, and all that kind of stuff. Now, I can argue it, but I don't have an agenda on either side, you know, because I always feel, what, what point does it make by saying that, okay, well, you have a fake Jesus and black people need to get out of worrying about Jesus. I mean, to me, it's a pointless debate. I mean, <laughs> you know, people have been debating that for 2018 years. If they haven't stopped debating it by now, they never will. But like I always say, you, st you cut off the cash flow in the churches, that debate will end very fast. I can guarantee that. So, yeah, that's why I don't really argue about those kind of things. I don't care about who wrote the book of this, who wrote the book of that, who copied this, who copied that. Well, no, I do care about if the Bible is copied from Egypt because that's, you know, you need to know about that. And then you understand how everything came to be. But, you know... Those are wasted time topics. Egypt, Bible, even Israelites, uh, Nation of Islam doctrine, Moorish Science Temple doctrine, uh, Pan African doctrine, which goes into these other doctrines, which are uh, fantasy doctrines, waste of time doctrines, consciousness. Like I always say, the conscious movement. It's synonymous with the Pan-African movement. And that is all made up of agents, coon agents. So that's why I'm not a part of any conscious community. I'm a part of the black American world, which is in America. Coast to coast U.S., we don't have any ties to any other country. We don't speak any other languages. So hopefully I got my point across. I don't know how this came out on the sound. But once I go live again, that's the funny part. I got the sound fixed on that live program. And now I can't go live. And I see most people go live. They do the Google Hangouts. Well, I use a separate program. I need to try the Google Hangout, do an experiment on that. And then I bring you guys in. Then we could talk instead of me reading out the... Uh, 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 the comments, and we can see who wants to say what they have to say. So I'm going to try that Google Hangout. I might experiment on that tonight. See how that works out. But then again, if I can't go live <laughs> at all, I guess I can't even do a Google Hangout. So maybe I'll do it on the Hard Cold channel. Subscribe to the Hard Cold channel. Once I say enough subs on there, maybe I'll go live on that one. 
And I got to check and see when this um, ban expires on this channel. So, yeah, just wanted to uh, make that video. Because I had the observation, I was just thinking about it, man. These, all these guys always do is focus on Africa and the Caribbean. Like Sarnetta, on that video he made on 1 2 -fifth, there was a guy that was selling some handmade African uh, continent thing in Onx. I said, you see what they're selling? It's either Freemasonry or African and Caribbean stuff. But it has nothing at all to do with Black American. They sell nothing that has to do with us. Nothing. They don't talk about anything that has to do with us. What they do is they use key words like us, we, what are we going to do, that white man, this and that. But they never specifically address black America's problems and concerns. Everything's designed to take your mind off of our concerns and you start worrying about somebody else and their politics, their countries, their concerns. And then those people are not concerned about us. This is why they keep talking about unity. Not unity amongst black Americans. They're talking about unity amongst Caribbean, African, worldwide black people. But, as you know, in this little discussion I had, this is why I keep bringing up the East Indians. And I bring up black Asians. Because these people like to leave those people out. Their primary focus are the Caribbean, which is a small country, and Africa. They might mention what they want to call Afro-Latinos. Um, but they don't really include them. And the reason they don't include them is because they don't speak English. That's why. Africa, they must include. You, you forget the Rastas. You know, they worship Ethiopia and Haile Selassie. So they have to include Africa. So, <laughs> I mean, when you, do, you connect the dots, you see that we're being played. We're being used. And I'm just pointing out what we need to do to stop being played and being used. That's why people become angry. Like I had one guy, I'm about to close this out. I had one guy, he said he was a Haitian. You could probably read it in the comment section. I think it was on the Why Africa video. He said he was a Haitian. I'm unsubscribing from you. I thought you were for all black people. I make myself clear I'm for black Americans only. I'm not for any other kind of black people. You know, we got to get our stuff together. Then we can get with these other black people if we need to. We always get the short end of the stick. That's why I'm, I'm for black Americans only. So he's mad. He's like, I'm unsubscribing. I'm like, well, I don't really care. Now, I don't like to belittle anyone. You know, I like, like these other people do. You motherfuckers, why don't you give me $20? All you got is two? I don't do that kind of stuff. Uh, I don't tell people, oh, go fuck you and all that kind of stuff. But in this case, and I'm not saying go fuck you to the guy. I'm just saying I don't mind him unsubscribing because he's not my target audience. I thought I made that clear, but a lot of people don't understand. I'm not. Let me make it clear now. I am not a pan-Africanist. I am not an Afrocentric. That is why you see videos, why Africa, and my questioning our African connection. And I'm not just questioning it. I'm asking for the evidence, and I can't get the evidence. People who act like they live it, they should be able to supply the evidence, the link, like that. But they can't do it. Just like you can tell me what happened in that Black Panther movie, almost scene for scene, you should be able to pull up the evidence that we come from Africa. Detail for detail. But you can't do it. You can't even give us anything. All you can do is say that we all come from Africa. That's it. That's not, that's not good enough. That's not good enough for anything. It's not good enough for anyone else in this country or in this world. So why is it good enough for us? Why do we have to uh, have foreigners come here and tell us we need to be connected to some other land? You Caribbeans do that if that's what you want to do. 
but leave us alone. Farrakhan is a Caribbean. He can't speak for us. That's why I dismiss Farrakhan besides the fact that he killed Malcolm X. And they keep saying he's under the weather. He might be on his way out. And that will be a good thing. That's right. I said it. Because once you analyze the facts, you will realize that Farrakhan is one of the biggest house niggas in U.S. history. Biggest sellouts. Total phony. Spent all those years bullshitting black people. The first level of bullshit is he's not a black American. Then everything he said, he took it back. July 2012 speech with the white suit or the bluish white suit. Just play that back. My voice is gone. (laughs) So you get the idea. This Pan-African stuff. Truth be told, I hadn't even planned on making so many videos on this at this particular time. But apparently... I have, so analyzed, I see a lot of people thinking, thinking strongly, more people talking about it. More importantly, wherever you go, the man, the evidence out of these characters. If they can't provide the evidence, ask them, why are you laying down a case? It's that simple. Ask them the specific questions that'll either shut them up or get them to talking. So, in other videos on TRS, you heard me debate other people who try to make this stuff real. No matter how intellectual they try to sound, when I ask them for the evidence, they can only get, give me a piece of evidence in one state or town from one point in history. But as we know, that doesn't even cover an entire month or a year. And it doesn't cover the whole country at the time. All right, my voice is done, uh, done, so I'm done. Peace.